I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day and, and your um, schedule to tell your stories. And I, I think it's important to kind of um, hear these things and, uh, and get the background on guys like you who have who've been in the, in these situations. And I, I want to thank you for, um, you know, sitting down with me and telling your story, man. Um, and again, and like we, I said before we got on here, uh, God, I haven't seen you since. What would you say? You think it was like 2006? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's when oh the last God. time we saw each other, man. Was my so going away. Well, I just kind of lost touch with everyone except for, well, not everyone, but like Q Brandenburg and Nick and so that we, we do something every year together. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. that. So yeah. Yeah. You that's for, um, you guys get together and hike, uh, through like New well, Mexico Yosemite, or Yeah. you like okay. Yosemite. We go, we did the perimeter of Yosemite. We did, um, Moab down there, um, canyoneering, uh, rappelling down into the, into the canyons and stuff. And, um, we're actually, I'm actually flying out Wednesday to go see Nick Brandenburg and Q um, out in Palm Springs. So oh, okay. we're going to be together out there. We're going to do Joshua Tree and stuff like that. And then do uh, a Mount San Janita, I think it is. Um, okay. It's like 11,000 feet or something like that. So, yeah, we try to get together every year and do something together. So I went to Q's. Well, we all met at Q's uh, retirement that you probably know he retired in October. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Which is which was cool. It was on my birthday. So. Oh, right on. <laughs> yeah. Was that planned? No, I'm just kidding. No, he asked. He asked. He asked me like he's like, "Hey, when's your birthday?" I'm like, "The 15th." He's like, "That's what I thought. That's why I'm retiring." So I, <laughs> he knew it was that day. So I don't know if he planned it on that day or it was like a present for you. That's the only day it was open for him to retire, and I just happy to be <laughs> happy to be there. <laughs> right on. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. I, I like it's cool. I see the pictures you guys post. Uh, and, and it's not just it's not like you guys just get together and just walk on a trail. I mean, you guys are like you said, you're you're rappelling down crevasses and like doing these giant uh you know excursions out in these these yeah areas. we're doing Mount Whitney, super... uh, in july which is this highest peak in the lower 48 um, oh, okay and, yeah so yeah we always say we want to do a nice easy trip but it never turns into an easy <laughs> trip <laughs> well that's not the kind of guys you are that's why i mean you, guys are, <laughs> you can't just uh you can't just do the easy stuff um mm -hmm. yeah so let's uh move back let's get back into it what, yeah so tell me about you know what made your decision to join the Air Force, because oh, another thing I was going to bring up, I, I that's why I was kind of stumbling here. You and Brandy are from the same area, like yeah, you guys, he's literally you guys... on the east eastern part of uh, Kentucky, Ashland, Kentucky. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. he so knew. Um, yeah, he, you guys knew of each other, and and uh, yeah, uh, yeah, we actually I know one of his friends he went to school with, and he's like, how do you know him? I'm like, well, it's through my work now that I know him, and it's just a yeah. small world and stuff. So, I yeah, know I mean, it's crazy. Yeah, we're both Kentucky boys, but he's a UK or was a UK fan. I think he's an Alabama fan now, but oh. I'm, a Louisville, I'm a Louisville fan. So, oh, okay, <laughs> so no, <laughs> a little rivalry there. Yeah, um, yeah. So go ahead. So tell me about uh, my, you, you know your childhood and like how that formed your decision to get in the military, and we'll go from there. Okay. Well, I mean, really, I, I mean, I always loved like watching military movies um, and everything like that. I never thought I'd go into the military to tell you the truth. Um, until after two years of college and realizing girls in maternity house was not a degree um, <laughs> because I would have been valedictorian of that if that was, <laughs> was <laughs> would have graduated in you know pretty on time um, and I just realized college wasn't you know wasn't for me my dad's like well, I'm not gonna pay for you to take bowling classes and get a C in it you know it's right. absolutely ridiculous yeah. um, so I went to the recruiters I went to all of them and the Air Force was just one of the ones that just it made sense. And actually, they just started talking about TACP Kerfield uh, in 93 um, when I went in. It was September 93. And they started talking about we actually had I had a pass test before I went to basic training. Um, they did it at Bowman Field down here in Louisville. So I went in knowing I was going to be I was going to come into it and be a TACP and stuff. And nice. I had no idea. <laughs> I had no idea about the military. I had no idea about, you know, anything. I actually got out of shape when I went to basic training. <laughs> so yeah. um, it was, uh, as you, I, well, you came in about the same time, you know. It yeah, wasn't, yeah. It wasn't and the PT was not the greatest in, in basic. Yeah, I heard it's changed now, though. I heard it's, um, they put all the guys that are going into the special Air Force Special Warfare into the same flight. And they're, what Q was telling me, that they uh, actually start doing more PT and stuff like that. Oh, so nice. They, so they stay in shape and stuff. So they're all all those guys in that flight are going into that into one of the four career fields and stuff in the Air Force Special Warfare. Oh, okay. I, um, cool. But yeah, I I went in and uh, went through basic training. Went down to Herbert Field. Um, that's where I met Q Jason at, and we were in the same flight together. And we just 
we've been best friends ever since. I mean, yeah. he, he's an awesome, awesome. As you know, you know, yeah, you, yeah. you've worked with him for years. We went through that um, and we went through survival school together. We actually got stationed together in Hawaii, yeah. um, which was, it's a, I, that for a young TAC P guy, that is the best place I think to start out at. Um, there's, there's no air on the island. There's very few times we got to control air on that. It was not, you didn't really drop any bombs or anything, but we went TDY everywhere. So you got to see a lot of the United States, a lot of, a lot of that's part of the, um, you know, Korea, Guam, Guam, you had, um, went to Japan. So it was really a good, um, assignment for a young TACP to get really like, you know, everything you wanted. And plus you got a lot of schools out of that too. Um, you know, with air assault school, airborne school, Close quarter combat instructor course. I went. I got. I was one of the first guys. I don't know how I did it, but I did it. I got Ranger School out of there, and nice. uh, <laughs> I didn't. I didn't even do it the right way. Um, you're supposed to go to pre Ranger. Sure. Yeah, I just skipped that. I just went straight to Ranger School. Oh really? Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm here. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm here. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that speaks volumes about you, man, because a lot of guys just going straight to ranger school is like a difficult prospect. Well, I anyway. went through like a pre pre ranger, like a year before that. And then that was just to get into pre ranger. And then the slot fell through for me to get in. So I was like, well, whatever. And I just, so I got, I picked up a slot from the army. And, nice. uh, so that was very, I was just very fortunate that I got that. I've always wanted, that's one of the, my, but I, when I came in, Somalia happened. So oh, okay. that was going on in basic training when Somalia happened. And I'm like, that I want to, I want to do that. I, that's, yeah. I, I've always wanted to go to ranger school and I checked that off my bucket list in 98. Nice. Um, so I, I can't, I was like a hundred and some guy. I, I can't remember. It was 109th or 110th. I don't quote me on that. The number's probably wrong, but Air Force got to go through ranger school at the time. So and I know there's quite a bit beyond me, but yeah, I mean, it was a lot of good schools out of Hawaii. Um, TDYs were awesome. Um, and, uh, I was there until 98, it was September of 98. So I got, I spent four and a half years there, which was, it was, it was great. And who else I was went, there with you? At the, um, you guys were there? was there, um, Ryan Birchfield was there. Ken Cox. I don't know if you know, Ken Cox. Yep. Yeah. He's out of his 82nd. Yep. Um, he was my first supervisor. I actually, uh, it was senior master starting chief quinn or senior master sergeant quinn at the time mitch okay. quinn at the time right. and he actually uh he he took me under his wing i, I and dennis delay a lot of the guys who went to uh the first desert storm so okay. they a lot of those guys so they've been over there and stuff and, and knew you know some type of combat or something so they they're teaching us a lot and uh dennis delay was there um harry oliver was there okay yeah yeah, yeah. So, because he came to the uh, 17th on the other side with the third ID guys, I believe. Right, right. He actually yep. picked me up um, at the airport for Ranger School. And I stayed at your guys' um, squadron when I was out there. And I forgot where it was at. I was out there in the woods somewhere in the trail. Oh, yeah. It was out on Harmony Church. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Way out yeah, there. Yeah. So <laughs> I spent the night out there before Ranger School. So, oh, nice. You know, yeah. He just dropped me off. I'm like, all right, I'll pick you up in the morning. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah. It, it was a bit, pretty big squadron stuff. So, yeah. The 25th is always, like I, I've said in multiple shows, that it, that's a that's a really good unit. Like it's always been traditionally like a really squared away awesome place to serve especially for like you said like a young airman there's so you learn so many things and you're just exposed to so many things it's really a nice uh, launching point for your career for sure yeah yeah, yeah. a lot of good opportunities and you know it was yeah it, it was uh it, like i said it was it was great so yeah. a lot of good guys out there and i think they're still i think they still are um oh, for sure. the, the squadrons like i think tommy case went out there for a while yep um, yep and then i from there i went to drum I was actually stationed with um, Shropshire up there. Okay. Um, and uh, I was up there for a few years. I did, I wouldn't, it's, it was a deployment. I did a deployment over to Bosnia for six months, uh, 99 uh, into 2000. Six months. How was that? How'd that go? Uh, it was, it was interesting. It was, it was cool. I mean, once again, you got to see a lot of the different, you know, of the, it, it wasn't as bad as it, like Kosovo was kicking off then. So oh, okay. a lot of guys coming up through Kosovo was, I was at Tuzla air force base and uh we were uh, like the quick reaction force for people so we were there and it it, it was nice it was, it was we went up to a sarajevo and stuff and saw the, the guys up there um there was other tacpees up there so we got to travel around the uh, countryside pretty pretty freely than anyone nice. else so and then i was yeah i was there until 
just after Christmas, uh, and I was into 2000 and then I came to you guys in 2001. So wow, I was actually, <laughs> I was actually getting out and it was, um, it was December, 2000 and I was getting out and I was talking to Q on Christmas. He's like, you know, you really should maybe think about staying in and like coming to the 17th. I'm like, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm, I, I didn't know what I was going to do when I got out. Um, my wife at the time, Gina, um, she wanted to get out, you know, because of the traveling and stuff like that. And then I was talking to Q and he's like, you really should think about maybe staying in and just maybe talk to Gina about and then coming here and you'd be stationed with me. I'm like, oh, all right, well, let me talk to her. So I talked her into it and <laughs> I reenlist. So I didn't know how it was going to work because I turned orders down to, for Korea because I was getting out. Uh-huh. And then I know that and usually that's like, like a kiss of death. So you're like, yeah, right, it you're is. Getting out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm getting yeah. out. I'm not, I'm turning down the orders of Korea. Like, and they're like, I know what it probably looked like to them. Like, Oh, you're just trying to get out of Korea. And I wasn't, I was really getting out. And yeah. I'm like, I'm going to cue that. I'm like, I think there's going to send me orders back to Korea. Um, he's like, no, 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 I'll, I'll handle it. And, I and Voight, um, chief or uh, master Sergeant Voight was there and stuff. And he, I don't know what they did or how they did it, but, um, I ended up getting orders to, uh, to Benning um down there um with you guys and i came there i, I was signing the how my deed to my house watching the towers get hit oh um, really yeah on september 11th so the deed to my house when we were signing the paperwork down there the towers got hit and um i looked at gina i'm like i think you're gonna be moving in by yourself maybe i don't i don't know how this is gonna affect us or whatever but and then you guys left i think we just met for a little bit yeah. And then you took off. And then I, I came there in October. Um, yeah. With you guys out there. Yeah, yeah. Alone. yeah. And then, uh, yeah. So I was at, I was at Benning for a very short period of time before I deployed. Like I said, you got there, right? At, I mean, depending on how you look at it, the, either the best time or the absolute worst time, <laughs> maybe family wise, think, not so good. But, yeah. yeah, yeah. Korea. Yeah, you know, he was over in Korea, like son of a. Bitch. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> and I, when I talked to him, uh, I sat down. Like he was on here too, and I, I had mm -hmm. forgotten that he left and came back. Uh, he yeah. went to Korea and then came back. Uh, was, yeah, well, that's totally... why I told him, like, dude, you talked me into saying something we'd be stationed together again and everything, and then you leave. <laughs> like, how do you, how does that work out? He's like, well, I'm coming back. I'm like, all right, well, you're the one that got me here, and then you're like, yeah, peace out, brother. I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, that started my deployments. Um, uh, all of our, as everyone in the unit that started our deployments over to uh, Afghanistan and led into Iraq and everything. So, yeah, um, multiple, multiple times to Afghanistan, multiple times to Iraq and stuff too. So that was, you know, it was, um, it was almost like a blur, as you probably same, yeah. You know, like you come home, you're not really home. You're getting ready. To, you're doing a JRX. You're doing whatever. You're doing this, and then you're gone again, you know? So yeah. I, it just became the norm and I, I truly loved it. I, I did. I, I loved it. It was Same here. You know, um, one of those things that a lot of people, you know, wish they got to do and they never got to do. And, you know, it was, uh, it was good and bad, I guess I should say. So, cause it lost yeah, yeah. about that. So, but, um, yeah, so I did a uh, deployment over there. The first one was with you, Oman. We went into Afghanistan and I replaced you over in, uh, when we we're over there um oh yeah i forgot about that yeah, yeah it was interesting because torbora was going on and when i was over when after i replaced you torbora happened and they were right. they're wanting to launch us from to go in there and they just they never did because they wanted the um the northern alliance guys to get them so and, yeah but we were like we can hit the back side of it and we had a whole you know as you know we had a whole company over there and uh right right um but I came back from that deployment. I think that's when I took over ACO from you and you went, is that when you went up to RD or? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's, um, that was around, I think Oh two or Oh three, I think Oh two, I deployed with second battalion. And then, and then when I got back from that, when I went to recce, okay. so yeah, around that time. So yeah, so I think, but to your point, yeah, you took over ACO mm -hmm. once I come back from that first deployment. Yeah. Right? Cause I deployed with yeah. them in Oh two at Asadabad uh, out there. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, Dean was talking about you. He mentioned your name a couple of times during his episode. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, I love it. <laughs> he, uh, yeah, um, he's an all. I, I couldn't believe he cross trained. Uh, and I know. Like I didn't. I can't believe he did that. So it was crazy. Yeah. I know. 
I got to watch that episode with him. So <laughs> yeah, it's pretty it's pretty good. Yeah, yeah and he we, everybody was trying to get him to, back to the Rangers, and he was like, you know what? I've been there, done that. Mm -hmm. uh, let me just be a t conventional tech B for a while and see how that works. And he crushed at that, man. He was really yeah, he, so. Yeah, he did well in the Ranger um, competition, I think, too. Like I, when he was, I think they, he was. In yeah, yeah, he, that's right. He went the best Ranger. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, that was interesting seeing him with a with a um, black beret on <laughs> instead of a tan one. He was, he's an <laughs> right. awesome fire support guy, though. He was, I, I would yeah. say, one of the best ones I worked with. And I, there's a lot, oh, there sure. was a lot of them there in third bat and the regiment and everything, too. So um, I, I'm not just singling him out, but just because I worked with him the most because um, yeah. he was at ACO. Um, and he was phenomenal. Really, I couldn't say more good things about him and everything. So, well, he he was real fortunate, and you're right. Every all the companies were great. I mean, mm -hmm. there was like there were great FSNCOs at each company, but Morris was just a wealth of knowledge. He was like a, a, a just a yeah. rock star of fire support. So that he had him, Mitch Emery was there. He yeah, was, Emery was, was also awesome. another yeah. stellar troop, mm -hmm. just awesome dude. So yeah, the ACO guys were kind of they had a, an, an in kind of, like I said, every company had their great FSNCOs, but you and I were at ACO. So we know that yeah. these two guys in particular were just phenomenal. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. So tell me about, uh, ABAT, tell me about that, uh, first deployment with those guys. So that was, um, that was my first airstrike ever. As, All right on. It. So it was, we, um, <laughs> I was going to the bathroom <laughs> at night, reading a letter and RPG comes in, <laughs> hits the back wall, and I'm like, whoosh, and I'm, I'm like, no way. Right? I'm like, I cannot die on the shitter. <laughs> like, <I can't. laughs> this is terrible. Like, I can't go out like this. <laughs> so, I mean, I was scared but pissed. <laughs> like, so, oh, yeah. Tank top on, shorts. So my first airstrike was with tank with a tank top and shorts on um, and a helmet with and, – and Q and another, and another CCT guy was there. Um, with another unit and they were lazing the targets for me and stuff. And I was calling and that was my first airstrike and stuff that they did. So, um, that, nice. I, that I ever did in, uh, in country, which was, it was interesting. So, um, and it was, uh, we're probably almost every night we take some type of indirect fire, you know, uh, yeah. mortars or RPGs or small arms or whatever. Um, we did a lot of patrols. We did a, <laughs> we cleared this whole valley um which was a death march I'm not sure we we're looking for uh this one hvt guy that i don't think he's ever been caught um but we we're looking for him down this valley and it was probably a 26 mile in 26 mile out it was it was and you guys walked the whole way yep yep Jeez. walk they, and we had another company come over and they i think it was bico or i can't remember it was bico or seco but they did the other side so it was, it was two companies and they cleared one side, we cleared the other and all the way down. Um, and that was, that was brutal going through those, those mountains and stuff among those oh, trails. And, uh, Q came out cause we needed, um, more, we had Hank house, myself, Foster, and then Q came out and, uh, geez, you guys are all there. Yeah, we had, we had, that's how much stuff, that's how much had stuff we had going on. Um, wow. so we had, a JTAC per team per per platoon, and uh, I worked with um, Aaron Bordeaux's platoon a, a lot, but most that's I was that's all actually the only one I really worked with. And uh, yeah, yeah, another good guy. Yeah, he's I, I still keep in contact with him when I go down to, to uh, Knoxville and stuff. And oh, okay. With him. Yeah, and then um, so yeah, we 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 were busy um, doing patrols every day, doing whatever, um, and we go out and it'd be going through a sod about up into the mountains, up into the border, having tea with the border guys and stuff and trying to find out stuff. Um, Rob Ryan was our, um, ACO commuter right, yeah. who he's, yeah, yeah. he's, he's awesome. <laughs> he's a great guy. Yeah. He's an awesome guy. <laughs> oh yeah. He didn't care. Like he literally pushed the envelope of what we could do. I mean, but it was the, the right thing, you know, he didn't, sure. he wasn't like a politician, even though right. I think he's, I think his family's in politics, but, um, yeah, he he definitely was a great leader and stuff like that. I know he oh, was yeah. you guys is up there in R D and stuff like that when he came up there and stuff. So Yep, yep. Um yeah, so I got to, you know, really get to know him a lot. Ripito, uh Russ, um, that was our first deployment together. And we had a we had a ball. I always he got he it was getting a shot. I think it was a penicillin shot because he was sick. And he's he was petrified of, of shots. Um, and I'll get into who Ripito is after, you know, later on, but so the doc gave him a shot 
and he jumped up and down the needle was like and his butt like just flopping up and, and i couldn't stop laughing he's like shut up Otter, shut up i just couldn't stop laughing and he, uh, so it was just like dude you're you're like this hardcore dude and you're like crying like a baby with a needle hanging out of your ass right. <laughs> so, that's just one of the stories i have about him so uh Oh. Yeah, I got to know him really well. Um, he was a great guy. And then, you know, of course, Dean was there and stuff, too. So, um, yeah, yeah. So that was pretty much the thought about. We were there. We It was a very busy time um, for us while we were there. And uh, it was, it, it, you felt like you were doing something, you know. Sure. So, and then, uh, yeah, we um, got back from that and we started doing train up for Iraq. Um, we did a lot of, uh, we did a couple um, equipment jumps up at Bragg to, you know, take down an airfield and all that, because our mission was to, um, go in and take bad dag international. Um, it, I think it was all, I think almost two and a half battalions of us were going to go and do that. Um, yeah, yeah. we were actually, um, I was in, um, PSAB and that's where we were launching from and we were loading the plane to go. Like I was walking on the tarmac and they canceled it um, because they said the fighter pilots are coming back saying it was just that we wouldn't make it because there was so much AAA that it we just oh really we wouldn't make it either. like you wouldn't even be able to jump you, you wouldn't even, yeah, the planes wouldn't have made yeah, it yeah it'd be almost like World War Two and D Day or something like that where they're all getting oh, man. But, so that, and that's what they're saying they're like it's there's too much you guys won't make it in we're gonna scrap it that's what at least what we were told and so the, it started happening and we're like are we gonna go in or we, what are we gonna do so then we got our uh, the follow-on mission to go in and um secure h1 airfield so we did a 500 foot combat jump into that um which was we didn't have a reserve on because there's no reason to after <laughs> if it doesn't yeah, open it's not gonna work anyway yeah if it doesn't open you're bouncing so right. um so that did that I, I got knocked out on a on a building like that's the only time i ever got injured or anything in in the military um I literally got knocked out and I woke up and um, I can't remember the doc's name, but he's, he's a short little stocky guy. You probably know who I'm talking about. Um, Miller was it doc Miller. Yeah. 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 And he came up and he's yeah. like, oh, are you fucking dead? I'm like, no, <laughs> no, I think I'm good. But my back had a black and blue mark across it. From oh my God. Uh, lane. Yeah. And I, that was, I woke up. I'm like, Oh shit, what happened? Um, so you hitting this, the side of it or it was just on, it, no, it was like a crumbled out piece of buildings like that. It, Cause the buildings the outline of it. And I was just yeah, yeah. on, like, I was trying to get away from the, um, land from the runway because, cause that's, yeah. you know, that's a freaking painful landing. Yeah. So I was at least trying to land in the dirt and, but I landed on the right. building and stuff and got knocked out. Oh my God. So that was, just, it was just, it was kind of funny. Um, yeah. and then we were there for probably four or five days. And then we, then um Aaron's platoon uh, Bordeaux's we got and then Captain Ryan went with us to go do interdiction along the highway going up from Haditha up to Syria so okay. we did we were out there doing vehicle interdiction um calling in airstrikes on vehicles uh it was very lucrative <laughs> target rich environment and uh <clears throat> we did um so we were out there for, let's see, is April 3rd, me and Ripito, he, Captain Ripito, was sitting, he's the fire support officer of, um, of the uh, company. And we're sitting there talking about, because was, this was his last deployment. And he was getting out after this because he was, um, you know, he's just, he was going to go on and do other stuff. And we we're just talking about that, like, what, what's he going to do and, you know, and everything. And, you know, just small talk on sitting next to this berm. And then we come back and we're supposed to, actually link up with Sean O'Neill's recce team. Um, mm -hmm. And they, cause they were like probably like maybe two to 300 yards or uh, meters in front of us, um, like watching the road. And so we were coming back and I can't remember what time of night it was. This car pulls up and this lady gets out and she's like screaming, they killed my mother, killed my father. I need water. And so me being I'm like, well, let's go up there and find out what's going on. Um, so we were walking up as me, Rip, Long, and Levade. And I, at the last moment, for some reason, I'm like, I'm going to turn around and get my, my go bag ready because, you know, for the, because we're leaving early in the morning. I'm like, so I'm like, you guys got this? And they're like, yeah, yeah, we got it. And as I turn back around, I look like back at the car and I see a dude sitting back there that we didn't see before. 
and I'm like, oh shit. And that's when it, the car bomb went off and I got blown like 10 feet through the air with a, this, the hood of the car was next to me and it was just utter chaos because it opened up a ambush. So we were in a oh firefight as soon as that happened. And I crawled around the vehicle. Um, Captain Ryan was there. I'm like, Rip's up there. We need to go get him. He's like, we got guys going up there now. Um, oh, who was the first sergeant at ACO? Um, I can't remember his name, but he was the only reason he lived because he was laying underneath the vehicle of one of the Humvees. He was laying underneath it, oh just kind of resting. And so that uh, initiated a firefight. And uh, I called in the medevac. Um, actually, I talked to Nick on the way in. And he was asked, you know, because they were worried that, you know, I think him and Brandy, we, I mean, from the, from what I heard, and I have a really kind of cool story I'll tell you about after this is um, the explosion could, could, could be seen like a hundred miles away. Like the eight, one of the A-10 pilots said they saw it. It was like a hundred miles away. They're like, there's no way, oh no one can God. survive that. <clears throat> so, so they probably thought the worst that you all were taken out. With yeah. Or yeah, they did. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then, uh. So Nick was coming in and then I was like, nothing was going on. So everything kind of died down. And then all of a sudden we used to start taking, I'm like, he's like, it is a, is it a cold LZ or is it a hot? I'm like, it's, it's fine. It's cold. You guys can come on in. And as soon as I said that, it just unleashed a, a massive firepower. And actually one of the, uh, the pilot of the 47 who came in and got Ripito and, and the guys um, who got hit, um, he actually flew the mission to go in and get bin Laden too. He actually wrote an article oh. of, that was one of the worst him, uh, any time in his career that he took fire. Um, oh, coming into your HLZ. Yeah, coming into like, it was like wow. stuff coming through and everything. And the bullets are coming. He's like, it, there's an article of it how he said that's one of the hairiest things that in for him to come into. And I, I told him like, don't land. You guys are not going to, you know, you're going to take massive fire and stuff. And he said, I'm coming in. And they came in. I met Nick and said hi and he's like glad you're alive i'm like yeah me too <laughs> <laughs> and uh so they had that, that then they took off um and then we kind of so you had the casualties on yeah i got the casualties and, on yeah. and we all stayed down there and stuff so we lost three of our guys um and another the other blocking musician came down and collapsed onto us and then everything kind of just died down after that and then we kind of pulled back to a different location of course and uh yeah. No, to say no one else slept that night. We were just kind of oh like what God, yeah. what just happened. Um, and then we linked up with Sean the next day. I think it was the next day or the, the day after. It, it was right when Q's happened. I'm not sure his, if his happened the 4th or 5th of April when Q got hit. Yeah, I'm not sure either. Um, but it was like shortly after that. Wow. And – all I, all we heard was one of the recce teams got hit and air force guys dead. And I knew the recce team and me and Sean, I'm like, and, and there, we didn't know that Sathers was with him. Um, yeah, yeah. so, and Sean's like, you, you, Q's dead. I'm like, I, and I told you, I'm like, I don't know what it is, but something's telling me he's not dead. Like something yeah. telling me, tell is telling me he is not, he wasn't, he's not dead. Um, yeah. and then come to find out it was, you know, yeah, say there's and stuff instead of Q, but then Q got hurt, and what he did there was just freaking heroic. Oh, um, phenomenal! Yeah, yeah, so just amazing. Yeah, I was just happy. Yeah, and I don't want and it, I I don't want people to think that we are being callous about say there. I mean, that was a horrible loss. Horrible. And, no, you know, horrible. He was a good guy, but yeah. but when we didn't know him, right. we knew Q. Yeah, and when and that was that that went out for every and everybody kind of heard about you know an RD JTAC got killed and or an Air Force guy got killed and we're like. It would hit us all. I mean, it was pretty devastating yeah. for us all until we found out. But yeah, we don't. I don't want to take away. from No, you absolutely sure. nothing. And I don't. And I, I didn't think you were. Right. I just wanted people to to understand that we're not. That's we're not doing that. Yeah, no. But no just, with Q, we knew he was our buddy, and yeah. you know, it was very harrowing. So yeah, was, you know, yeah, exactly what you said is like definitely. I mean, that's horrible what happened, and no one, you know, anyone to die, whoever it is, and it just like you said, it made sure. it hit home more for us, just because of the relationship we had with Q and stuff. You know? Sure. Sure. Um, and then that happened. <clears throat> Come to find out, and Q was fine, so that was cool. Then April six, um, we we're engaging a tank battalion. <laughs> we're just calling an air. Oh, really? There's a very loop. <laughs> cool. At this time, um, Dean came out. Um, he came out to replace Rip, and then okay. also Joy Trent Joy came out when he was he, another right. great 
guy. Yeah, I, I remember American. we gave him his check ride out and uh, I think it was Nevada and we're like chucking rocks at him. I was like, yeah, you're taking fire. <laughs> so, <laughs> and he was like, <laughs> so, um, but yeah, they came out to uh, help me. And then, um, so we're, we're actually engaged in a tank battalion and this car was, I didn't, what I didn't see was coming behind it. it was weaving in and out of, out of cars that were, we, we have already blown up. And I had no idea that there it was coming. And so I was talking to the uh, A-10 pilot and he's like, Hey, you have a car coming behind you um, at a high rate of speed. I'm like, okay, well keep me in, you know, keep me posted. And the next thing I knew, like a minute later is I heard his, at eight, him firing his guns oh. and he blew up the car and the car secondary explosions went up and blew up. It was another car bomb that was coming towards our position. And Man. I, I, I didn't know it for, I'm like, what the hell did you, I literally on the, on the I'm like, what the hell did you just do? <laughs> like you dropped without clearance. Like, and he's like, no, it just, it didn't look right. And, and that's when the secondary, I'm like, Oh, shit. so we went down there and it was a car bomb. And I always said, so he kind of say he could probably save some more lives by doing that. Oh, he saved. Yeah. All, yeah. It, him and come to find out. So this is kind of really kind of a cool story that, um, I always said, I want to thank him. You know, you know, you'd never get to see the pilots that we talked to and stuff and everything. And, and the one eighteenth and the one thirty first were pretty much attached to us out there. Um, mm-hmm. that, and we're there on call all the time. So that's who we talk to all the time. Like Brandy was talking to them up at the dam, Nick, Tommy case. Um, so we talked to him like every day, but we never, you know, you heard a call sign, but you recognize the voice, but you never put a, you know, a call sign to the face. Sure. So I was, um, this is probably five years ago. I was talking to one of my friends and she was, um, her husband was an A-10 mechanic. And I was just telling her that, you know, we were just talking about the military and I, was, and I told her that story and he goes, I think I might be able to, you know, find out who that, you know, at least a squadron was. And I'm like, okay, well, whatever. And, uh, yeah. About two months later, I get a text from Jamie, who the name. She's like, "Hey, this guy named Biggs is going to be texting you, and he thinks he knows the pilot that you're talking about." Um, I'm like, "Okay, that's cool." So I talked to him. He was actually at the 130, 131st, and he was like one of the mission planner guys, um, one of the head guys, and he's a pilot too. And he's like, "Hey, I think I know the guy you're talking about." And his call sign was Gator. Um, and so he found the footage of that. Oh, like that from the HUD? From the HUD, from his wingman. Oh. And with me talking to him to, on the uh, radio and stuff, and him coming in and strafing this car. like, And it was like, I guess it was famous in their two squadrons because you never, it was like, you could, and when they blow stuff up, it was like, it was just how it was, the car was going like this. And he was just like coming in and you can see the HUD footage and him just blowing the shit out of this car. And I'm like, holy shit, that's cool. So he, he's like, hey, I'm going to have the guy call you. And um, so we talk. I got to talk to him on uh, Gator. I, I don't even know their real names. Like, I know. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> right. I got to talk to him on the, on the phone like three years ago. And this past January, um, Biggs texted me. He's like, hey, because he's an American airline pilot. He's like, hey, I'm, I'm staying. I'm, I have a layover in Cincinnati. Would you like to have, you know, coffee and breakfast um, in the morning on Sunday morning? I'm like, yeah, absolutely. So he went up there and uh, had breakfast and talked. Like it was like I knew the guy forever. And he's like, "Hey, we're having a reunion on the twenty fourth of March of a twenty year reunion of Haditha of all. We're just being deployed over there. Um, sure. Do you would you want to come if the guys are okay with it? I'm like, yeah, I would love to come up there and, and meet everyone and stuff. So he's like, well, let me check with the guys because you know it's their their thing. So. Te- yeah, it's like 18 guys only. Yeah. So yeah. to be invited to that is man, pretty pretty prestigious. It was it was cool. It was uh he so he texts me back and goes, Hey, they they want you they everyone wants you to come. So me and Laura flew up there and um <clears throat> we got to meet all the guys. And I got to meet Gator, I got to meet the guys who talked like to Brandy and um Case and Nick and it was surreal. Like they Yeah and they were like the most humble it was a very humbling experience just being there but they're the most humble like gracious like come to find out like a lot of times they would when they've been going on fuel which means they're out of fuel if they don't get back to base they have enough fuel to get back to where they're going they would stay way beyond that and they would climb the altitude coast as far as like so they could get back to base but they would stay on station as long as they could until another two ship um came on 
And I remember them. That community is just amazing. Yeah. I mean, every, I've never met a guy in that community where I've been like, oh, he's kind of a jerk. They're, they're, like you said, they're always down to earth. They're all, they always want to get after it. They're always there to help. They're, I mean, they're just, yeah. just an amazing group of folks, man, for sure. And they, they even said, like, we felt like we are your guardian angels. I'm like, well, that's what you guys were. I mean, I know the guys for in the sure. dam would love to talk to you guys and stuff. So they actually gave me some footage of the dam of them calling. I can hear Brandenburg. I can hear Case. Oh, man, Nick. that's so cool. Yeah, so I got – they gave me a thumb drive of that. So uh, um, it's all declassified. But um, yeah, yeah. It, it's – you can – you know, you can hear Brandy on it like, yeah, <laughs> when it was, oh, so it I'd love, was, to, hear it. I'd love cool. to hear that, yeah, man. It was very, That's so cool. Yeah. Now I'll, I'll, I'll send you some. Um, it, it was very interesting. It was very just surreal being there. And then I didn't, I was sitting there doing shots with, um, with a guy and stuff like that. I'm like, Hey, what's going on? You know, you know, I am, um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> some things never change. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> I'm like, oh, what are you doing now? He's like, oh, I just retired. I'm like, oh, that's fucking cool. And he goes, I'm like, oh, and he's like, yeah, I, um, I'm a three star general. I'm like, oh, <laughs> so, I'm like, you're like, cool, man, my brother. Yeah, I, never, yeah, okay. I never thought I'd be doing shots of Blanton with a three star general, but that's cool. <laughs> so, right. But yeah, yeah. So it was. But that's a testament to those guys. I mean, he he what didn't you know he didn't feel the need to you know act that way. No, no. He's, he's just a cool dude. Yeah, they're I mean, all just... very they. Uh, they wanted to hear stories too, like what was it like being down there? And I'm like, I, I'll tell you what it's like for me where I was at. But, you know, the guys, I know the guys on the dam, like every time you guys checked in, they were like, they loved, and it was just like, you got his word, they're guardian angels up there and stuff. And it's almost like a, a relief that, oh, thank God they're here. Yeah. You know, like I, I can't, I always say, I can't imagine what Brandy and Tommy were going through on the dam. I mean, that just seems unfathomable to be just like kind of constantly shelled. And who knew what was going to happen at the end of it? I mean, yeah. they could have, you know, there was a, such an overwhelming enemy force. Oh man. Yeah. yeah, they did. They did an amazing job and they deserve everything they got and stuff. And, um, for sure. I was, we were trying to help alleviate guys coming in. That was one of the tank battalions that we engaged cause they were coming to the Aditha and we, we we're just trying yeah. to help them out as much as we could with our little band of. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> another thing. I mean, you, uh, yeah, I don't mean to take away from you. I mean, you guys, uh, you, you, would you have a platoon or a company? No, uh, no, there was, uh, it have... was just over a section. So we didn't have a full okay. platoon. So you had a section of guys taking on a tank battalion yeah. of light, you know, airborne infantry, yeah. ranger, you know, rangers, which is not always, we did, we always did, work out secure, we did procure a um, ZPU, um, two i think it was or maybe it was, i don't know but so we had that tone behind one of the humvees and stuff we, <laughs> we figured out how to do it by accident like oh you someone pressed their foot on the thing he's like dur, dur, dur. i'm like oh shit. <laughs> so that was did you guys use it against the oh, the bad guys oh yeah we use it against vehicles and everything <laughs> so was, oh that's awesome yeah. oh it's so yeah, awesome it was cool it was cool <laughs> so we had that tone around the behind us on the uh, on a humvee and stuff so <laughs> oh i love it but uh <laughs> we just, yeah it was, it was it was interesting you pull over guys like we pulled over this like we shot in front of him he stopped um and we opened this trunk and it was just full of money like just full of money and i'm Jeez. like oh jesus that's very tempting but we you know it was, right it, like let me just take a look <laughs> yeah i know like <laughs> but it was just uh, and then some people wouldn't stop so and then you had to you know do what you had to do and stuff the funniest yeah. thing was it, it turned out to be really funny this um truck was coming down and it just wouldn't stop so they hit it with a uh oh they hit it with a gustav carl gustav and a thing right, went, right. on its side and you see this guy climbing out and i'm like what the hell so we're like sitting there and like well let's see if he has any guns or anything like that so he jumps out reaches in i'm like oh he's reaching in for something and he pulls out this hookah pipe and he just starts taking off through the <laughs> through the desert with this hookah <laughs> pipe <laughs> flying around everywhere i'm like that's something you don't see every day <laughs> that was a priority for him at the time. Yeah. He's like, let me get my hookah yeah. and get out. Yeah, that was just it, this guy running through the <laughs> desert with a hookah pipe underneath his arm. And the, the things are going up. <laughs> we got a was he even a bad guy? Or I don't mean, know. Was I he don't just know. like, <laughs> to, yeah. Anything well, that, that's that's what I've always was said. supposed to be not, they, they, it was bath party members and stuff in there. Right, right, right. In Syria, and they weren't supposed to, they were told not to be on that. So, you know, now if we did capture one, we'd have, um, it was second platoon would come out and pick the prisoners up and take them back to H1 and stuff. So okay. yeah, they would come out and they would, they would resupply us and everything too. So yeah, that was a interesting, uh, interesting about a month we did that. We we're out there. Yeah. So, and then we came back and 
flew back on a commercial. They landed there at H1 Airfield, which is kind of weird. A, a commercial yeah. airliner landing <laughs> in a combat zone. Um, right. So, and I got to fly, uh, I finagled my way up to first class. <laughs> so was, nice. Nice. I was, one of the first and only times I ever flew first class was out of Iraq, which is kind of ironic. <laughs> so, <laughs> that is. <laughs> so, and then we got to meet every, we met up with everyone too, um, which was, that I'm, I'm you've seen that picture of all of us in the front of the Saddams and stuff like that. Yeah, it's a great picture. Yeah, so it was good to see everyone because, as you know, when we deploy, we usually don't see each other that much. Um, right, it was uh, so it was good to be back with everyone and, and see them and talk to them and stuff. Like yeah, everybody's in that man, even like guys <laughs> like um, like some SF uh, Tag P guys mm -hmm. were in that. I think Bickle was in yeah, there, Bickle, I want to say, but yeah, yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. they were augment T guys um, that came over and, and helped us and stuff like that because we were just yeah. we were so thin there wasn't enough of us. They were great. yeah. The one the one glaring thing I noticed about that picture is that I was not in it because I was sitting in Afghanistan <laughs> during all that time and we're just like twiddling our thumbs and nothing was going on and we're just like kind of like getting sit reps and listening to the radio and it's uh, yeah. You, it was, you and I, Q were the ones he said he even said he was like yeah that happens not a cool picture I'm not in it either <laughs> so it's like. Oh, he was not in that either. Well, oh, well, yeah, that, well, yeah, because he was just—he was on his way back to the states. Yeah, yeah, yeah. from getting blown up. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah, that was a—I think that's still hanging in the. Uh, I think I, I was talking to Minion and stuff, and he said he was—it's still hanging up in there. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good so one. So that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, we uh, flew uh, something early May. We flew back. Flew back to Benning. So. And then we. And then uh, what year was that? Was that uh, still O three? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Because we went over, was it end of February, beginning of March of '03, and then we went in. I want to say March 19th. So, okay. So then you got back, and then then what happened? So we did. We took some took some time. Took some time off. Uh, I just needed to, just because it was uh, sure. something you don't. <clears throat> I know Brandenburg and all them too and stuff, but when you oh when you see God, your buddy, I can't imagine what you get like blown up three of them that you were just talking. And Lividay was actually supposed to come over and put speakers in my house because we talked about doing Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. And he was another, we just, uh, just a lot of good guys at ACO and stuff like that, as you know. I remember Lividay from when he was a, like a PFC. Yeah. I mean, when I first got to ACO, he was a PFC. And, and when I heard, yeah, that was hearing names that you used to serve with. And then, mm -hmm. you know, you that's, it's it's hard. Yeah. It is hard. Yeah. And especially, I'm sure for you for being there. And yeah, I mean, it just sucks. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. It, it, it was, you know, we, so we took some time. We did, um, I got to do the flyover, um, at third range of battalion for rip and them, the, the, the ceremony they had there. So I was, I got to control the flyover to, to do that. Oh, I was like nervous. I'm like, all right, so what's, a, what's the time hack to make sure they fly at the right time and everything. So, um, <laughs> yeah, you don't want to mess that no, up. No, I got to uh, meet Ripito's uh, mom and dad. Um, so he actually, his dad had a picture of me and rip in a and, I never wore a helmet. Um, right. <laughs> never. I was, I was that kind of, I always, uh, I was always like that guy in the, as you probably remember, like yeah, yeah. always pushing the envelope on stuff. Sure, um, sure. Actually me and Brandenburg got in an argument over the radio about where he's like, <laughs> I'm like, I got my skateboard helmet on fire. He's like, you need to have a helmet. I'm like, I don't need a helmet. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, what little hair Brandenburg had left, man, like supervising me, it got pulled out when he was supervising me. I, <laughs> right, right. I told him that. I'm like, I am so sorry how I acted. Like he's like, God damn it. Wow. <laughs> it just, um, but that just that was me. So I, but the my point was when Pitt, um had a picture of Rip and he had his helmet on stuff. I had a baseball hat and I got to meet his parents, which was really nice and uh, yeah. talked to them and um, you know, just yeah, it's horrible when you see that. You know, his his dad and mom. Um, but they were in good spirits because it was a little bit after the their funeral and some of that. But it was nice to be able to meet them and, yeah. and talk to them. So and be part of that uh, ceremony. Which yeah. a funny story is I got a ticket. It was January two thousand three um, in a school zone because I was going to the squadron. And I was late. Oh. <laughs> And then I deployed, we deployed like the end of February. So I never made my court date. <laughs> like, then, oh no. <laughs> so when I got back, I actually had a warrant for my arrest for skipping a court date. <laughs> so, so, I, uh, yeah. so I went to the court and I'm sitting there and then they come up to my case. It's like the second or third case. And the judge is like, we're going to, we're going to put this one off to the very end. 
And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> like, oh, no. I'm like, hopefully they, hopefully they take into consideration. <laughs> yeah, like, hopefully they take into consideration that I was out of country, that there was no way I could, you know. So You're defending the nation. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Maybe take that. Um, so the police officer was there, too. Like, he's like, I'm fucking hammering this dude. Like, he's. It yeah. was in the school zone too, so I get it. That's, that's, that's did he know? But did the cop know at the time what you were doing, or was he? Not, no, he we, didn't, we yeah, didn't know sure, we were yeah. deploying either. We really didn't know. Yeah, like, yeah. we knew we we're going to. We did a bunch of training missions. We just didn't know until like literally, it's like probably like I want to say like two to three weeks, like like maybe a window of when we're deploying. And that was really close hold too, because we weren't really advertising we were going to Iraq. I mean, that was like, oh yeah, you know what I mean. Like, you, it was very, very clandestine. I mean, yeah. it wasn't, you know, we were not broadcasting that to anybody. So yeah, like yeah. when we did our jumps up in a brag and stuff, it was, you know, very like no one, like you couldn't even, you know, tell your families really what you're sure. doing and stuff like that. And we right. really didn't know until like we started doing jumps and seizing the airfields. We're like, oh, this is what we're doing. Um, yeah, yeah. So I'm in the courtroom and. I'm the last guy there, only guy in the courtroom. The judge is like, um, Mr. Otter, you can come on up. And I was in uniform too. I'm like, well, at least I'm showing I'm in the military. So I'm not, sure, sure. I come up there and the police officer standing here. And I can't remember his name because the judge goes, so-and-so, <clears throat> I know what this guy has been through in the last month. We're going to let, we're going to let this one go. And the cop's like, okay. Come, oh, good. Come to find out the judge is, was really tied into um, the 75th Ranger Regiment and heard about um, Haditha. I can't remember the guy's name who got his head injured up there um, on the dam, but he n- knew the guy who got injured. And he knew Rip- he knew about Ripito and everything, and somehow he knew that I was I was there. So he just I didn't have to worry about that ticket, so, which was really nice. cool. And the cop, yeah. the cops like I I understand, Judge. No questions here. So it was, uh, that was, that was really cool of them and stuff. And we kind of, yeah, no doubt. And stuff. And so it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was a funny, cool story at the end. <laughs> Thought I was going to go to jail for. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't imagine any sitting judge like holding that against you or saying, you know, I mean, just that, but it's, it's even, it's even a better story that he knew something about. Yeah. It, you, know, that he, you didn't even have to say anything. That's awesome. Yeah. I get a letter like Gina's like, well, you have a warrant out for your arrest. I'm like, Okay. <laughs> so, Pack the kids up. We're out of here. We're, we're, we're on the lamb. We're going. We're heading to another state. We're out. <laughs> so yeah. So we did train up, and then we went back over um, to Afghanistan a few more times after that. And uh, we it was um, it, it was it was not nothing as much as Iraq. Like Iraq was yeah. like in those in that month, three weeks, three and a half weeks. Um, it, the combat we saw was not even comparable to what Afghanistan was um, in the la- other three deployments I did over there and stuff like that. Um, we still did a lot of stuff. Don't get me wrong. When we went back and, sure. and did stuff, and um, my very last deployment, I was with the um, eight with the third Ranger Battalion Recce Team. Um, they just stood that up, and I was over there with oh, them. That's right. And um, we were our one of our missions was to find out Pat Tillman's who like plan that ambush for him so we worked with a lot with the uh with the afghans guys and stuff and you know dressed like them and went out and did um it, which was really it was fun to do all that and you yeah. got to see where that valley he went through it's like jesus how did they why did they even come through this it was like sheer rock like hundreds of feet yeah. straight up and i don't know how the bear, like our toilet hilux we were in barely went through that i don't know how they got the humvee through that so it was a wow. perfect place for an ambush um and then i went back to um i yeah i, went, I had to go back to the dentist something was wrong with my i think a cavity that came out or something like that or a filling and i had to go back to bagram so matty green took over for me there and okay. uh those guys went on a on on a mission and there's a friendly fire um that happened on that and Groff. I don't remember if you remember Groff. Um, I don't think so. Okay. He got um, hit, but you know, and Matt was kind of shook up because, you know, he's, he did everything he needed to do. And it was just one of those things that just couldn't, couldn't put by, but I felt bad for not being there. Um, yeah. Cause I was a bottom getting my tooth fixed by an English doc, English dentist was, I don't recommend. He didn't <laughs> fill it all the way down. So I got like a dry socket. In it, so it was horrible. Oh no. Yeah. So when I got back to Benny, I had to get that fixed. So it was made it worse than what it was. But uh, yeah, um, that my last deployment over there was, it was, um, 
and I forgot who it was who it was his last deployment too. And uh, we're leaving um, Benning and he goes, Hey, just be, he knew it was my last one. He's like, Hey, Otter, just be careful. Everything happens on your last appointment. Like rip a toe happened on his last appointment. Um, and I'm like, yeah, I'm good, man. Don't worry. We'll, we'll be fine. We'll be, we'll be good. And kind of, we're going out to Salerno um, out there in Afghanistan in, in the Eastern part of Afghanistan along the border <clears throat> in a vehicle. One of the Humvees flipped over and ended up killing him. And I can't remember his name to save me. I don't know why it's, I know it. I just can't remember it. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. So it's like a fluke accident like that. You just never know. Um, you never know. Yeah. Man. You never, know. you never know on that. And, uh, so that was, I was like, damn it. <laughs> um, I know. So yeah, we, um, it was a good deployment, my good last deployment to end on. And I didn't want to get out. Um, it was Gina. There's a picture of me and Gina when I came home from Iraq and she like, she saw on Fox news, the ticker come across about the Rangers who died and she knew the names and she knew that's who I was with, but she never knew. She didn't I think jazz did a really good job of, um, of keeping them informed and keeping her informed and everything, sure. but she got kind of freaked out about that. Um, so she's like, we're done. <laughs> we're done with the military. Yeah. We're done. So there's a picture of the boys hugging my legs. And then like, she looks like she's giving me a kiss on the cheek, but she's whispering in my ear, like we're done with the military. So I was like, uh-huh. okay. Um, <laughs> so I didn't want to get out. I mean, I loved it. I, I just, I, you know, if I, knew what I knew now I would have stayed in. (laughs) So, um, it's true, but yeah, but we talk about this a lot on this on here too, but there comes a point when, you know, you have to think about your family too. You know what I mean? Like they're, they're a huge part. You had two boys Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, you had Gina and regardless of what happened from, you know, since then, you know, sometimes we have to like put our own desires on the back burner Mm -hmm. for our family. And I think that's commendable that you did that. I I guess that's what I'm saying is like you, I think you made the right decision. Yeah. I mean, I kind of did, I, I left the military in a similar way for family reasons, but, um, but at the end of the day, I think it's, that's what kind of, you're a selfless guy Mm -hmm. and you know, you, I think you felt that it was necessary to do. And I, I I commend you for it, man. I think that's a good decision. Yeah. We all want to keep getting after it and getting after it. But you know, at the end of the day, there are other people in our lives that we have to kind of, you know, take into consideration too. So. Yeah. And I, I, and I get out of that. They actually, my nickname at um, some of the guys was like Teflon because I literally nothing ever happened <laughs> to me. Yeah. Like there's guys <laughs> all around me getting hit. Like we're in a vehicle um, in Afghanistan. We're coming back through the, through the mountains and stuff. And we got hit by an ID on the side of the road and a piece of shrapnel came up in the back of the Toyota Hilux and it was sticking through it in between my legs and everyone else in the vehicle got some type of shrapnel and I'm just what minor or whatever. And literally nothing happened to me. And I, but there's a piece of shrapnel. I still have it in my office. Um, oh barn my that's sticking between my late and my dumb ass. Like I'm going to reach down and grab that and burn the shit out of my hand. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> it's probably pretty hot. Still, yeah. Yeah. Um, but it was like, <laughs> I'm like, God damn it. And Sergeant major Birch was like, actually, you remember Sergeant major Birch? Oh yeah. yeah. He's fucking a legend. Um, he's like in the back yeah. seat with me. He's like, what the fuck? God, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's stupid. Move. I get it. <laughs> so, yeah. but I did get it out, and I do have it. Um, right on, right so, on. So uh, he was he was a great guy too to get to work with him and, oh, and yeah. get to learn like just the the little time I've spent with him is why that I learned a ton from him. So he always yeah. I never even I was never stationed with him. I never I just know him of him. I've seen him around, you know. Yeah. But I've never been. I never. I was never in a situation like you were or like Brandy was, you know, on the dam. I mean, yeah, uh, but that I can't, that's, I'm envious that you got to spend it at least that little bit of time. Yeah. With it was him. a He's small, it wasn't like we went on. I mean, but it was, he just like, after that, um, that IED went off, like he just the way his instructions and just how he was like, you need to look for this and you look for that. It's like, wow. He's like a word. I mean, he was a legend in Delta too. So, um, yeah, yeah. Just a pro yeah. all through and through. Yeah. And he always made fun of it because me and the boys would always, make necklaces before we leave on deployment. So I'd make, we'd, so knowing that it's just something that we did together. Yeah. And yeah. so he always called them the air force anal beads. <laughs> like that, I, like, <laughs> he's like, got your air force anal beads on. Her. I'm like, yep. Yep. I got, I'm making a special pair for you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I mean, so he's like very hardcore, but he's also, he had, he had a jokingly side to him too. So, yeah. yeah. Um, 
Yeah. But yeah, so I, I guess what that story was going was um, at some point you're something's going to happen. Um, and I, I'm glad I, I am, I am happy that I did make that decision to get out because Spencer was four months old when I first deployed. He was born in 2001, June, and I deployed in, you know, into September, you know, October. Yeah. And he never knew me like as a stead, like being a, someone in his life the whole time as a, as a little baby, you know? Um, right. And then Logan was, you know, Logan. <laughs> so he, yeah. he, was, he was like a little mini me on a little wild child. Um, still <laughs> is. Um, so when I got out, um, and then if I had to go like overnights for work, I could not tell Spencer that who's my youngest, that I was going to be gone for a couple nights. Like, I would just tell him that I was coming home late and leaving in the morning, leaving, leaving early in the morning because he'd think I was going back to Afghanistan. Yeah. That's yeah. rough, man. Yeah. It was sad. So, so that's, so to my point, yeah, that's, you yeah. got to think about it. And, and plus, and it's not like it's not like you didn't do anything. I mean, you did plenty. I mean, you were like involved in so many things and you, yeah, you, you might've wanted to do more, but your career was in that short time was phenomenal. So, I mean, yeah, you, you, you were yeah, well justified in getting 13 out of year or almost 13 years. And it was, uh, I just mean like, as far as like even the combat portion, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah before for, for sure. But yeah. yeah, I mean, just that, I mean, just that little bit, not a little bit, but just those combat deployments, you were getting after it. I mean, you were doing yeah. so it was like condensed, this condensed kind of, you know, mm-hmm. combat experience was, yeah. So no, I think you made the right decision, man. I, I always do. And, and I, I always think about, I tell, I tell guys to this day, I'm like they, when they want to go to a, a unit like the 17th or do any kind of combat related job, I'm like, are you married? Do you have kids? Yeah. I would hold off, you know, hold off on that stuff because Cause you will be divorced. <laughs> <laughs> either that or your kids won't know you or, you know, or yeah. something. Yeah. I mean, it's, that's a heck of a lot easier when there's, no one else in the picture. You can just go it and is. focus and go. And yeah. So. And that was the biggest thing. I mean, I'm sure you felt the same way. Like when I was over there, it like, all I had to worry about was myself and my, and the guys I was with, which, you know, and work out and go on missions. And that's all you had to worry about. You don't have to worry about bills. You don't have to worry about kids. You don't have to worry about right. anything like that. And that started, I could see when guys say that, you know, that became more normal than coming home. You know, I wasn't like one of those guys in the grocery store all zoned out or anything like that. Like, you, know, you see some of, those, some of these movies, but I was like, it, I didn't, I started feeling like I felt more comfortable overseas than I was at home. Sure. Um, yeah. Just because there's so much, and then it was like everyone talking and every, it was like, oh my, it's like almost like overwhelming at some times to, you know, of the stuff that you have, you know, as you know, you come home to and stuff, you know, and right. um, crying kids and this and that, and you're, you're, you know, your wife is ready for a fucking break because she hadn't had a break for three months and exactly respects you to come in back and you can't discipline your kids because they're like, well, who the hell are you? You haven't been here. Right, right. So, um, yeah, it was, uh, it was definitely a good decision to, uh, to get out and, um, to do, I, I don't regret it at all. I got to, you know, spend a lot of time with the boys with their sports and everything like that. And, yeah. um, yeah, we got, it, it was, I don't regret it. I just, I know what you mean. I know. What you mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you I don't have to explain it. anymore. I know. Ex- yeah. I don't regret it either. But yeah, I wasn't quite ready to get out. But yeah. it's it was. You probably feel the same way as I do. It it wasn't really a decision. I mean, it, of course I'm going to get out. Of course I'm going to do what you mm-hmm. know what's best for my family. Um, but yeah, there's always that thing in the back of your head that's like, man, I yeah. could be doing this other stuff. <laughs> you look at Q and he's like, just got done doing thirty and yeah, you know, <laughs> still yeah. jumping and you know and like, doing yeah. 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 Still doing a little, you know, still in there in the game. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I know. But you know, that, that that's that's amazing career though. I mean, that's to make it that, you know, the thirty yeah. years. That's a that's a long time. You know, when I, I, I think that didn't used to be the norm. I know when you and I were in, um, like guys were getting out at twenty and twenty two, yeah. twenty four. They weren't going to thirty years and but now no. it's like now it's like the normal thing. These you know, the guys make chief and they, they end up doing thirty years and it, yeah. it seems it seems like the new normal, I guess, or something. So. I, it does. I mean, even officers and stuff. You're like, they're it's not twenty, and they're they're like staying for thirty, thirty five yeah, yeah. years. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. Well, that's if it's more money or what. But um, yeah, and I, yeah. I think a lot of our guys too are. There's a lot more opportunity for them to make chief than it was when for sure. Were, you know, um, I've actually stayed with a friend of mine, Brett Barbie. I don't know if you know oh, yeah. him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I talked. <laughs> funny story there. We're he was in a different career field. Uh, we were, and he was in Hawaii the same time I was in Hawaii and we were on this detail cause I got in trouble 
don't figure. Um, <laughs> right. What? There's some other, something with me and Navy guys. I, I don't know what it was. Like, <laughs> and that's where Chief or Chief Quinn, he was like, I need to put you in a glass box otter and say, break one war. Like that's, you know, because right. you're a shit show outside of, outside of war. Like awesome operator, shit show outside doing you stuff. You were just having like, fun. What? I, yeah, why I didn't understand? Like, yeah. Train hard, man. What was like, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, I, I should have been kicked out of the military, but it, it, it wasn't for him. Um, and Ron Myers and stuff, too. Uh, he was there, yeah. too. Um, I don't think yeah, I, I should have been kicked out. He went to bat for me more than once. Um, but so we were on a detail together, and I was just talking about our career field and stuff like that. I'm like, you really should just cross train because what you're doing is it. You know, I, I can't remember what. Wait, what, so you, you, met, you knew Brett Barbie before he was a tech B. And you I talked essentially him into talked him into being a tech B. Yeah. yeah <laughs> How yeah. about that? <laughs> yeah. So, and he, you know, he's done very, I mean, his oh, career is amazing. Phenomenal things. Yeah. yeah. Gee whiz. And uh, so I stayed with him up in Massachusetts with him and his wife, me and Laura did up there. And, and it was very, uh, it was, uh, I haven't seen him since Hawaii. So wow. in him, he just welcomed us into his house. Um, he um, was very gracious. Let me borrow his car to drive to the, to the thing. Um, so it, it's just weird how those connections and stuff like, yeah. but I guess my point was like, you know, he was a command chief at the 104th fighter squadron, um, which that's, and he was at the Pentagon, which I know everyone hates the Pentagon, yeah. but he, he went up there and you know, he, his career just is, it's amazing. Like in that, yeah. and he, I think he stayed in for just over 22. Um, Sean Minion, um, you know, yeah, Sean, another great like, guy. Another awesome yeah. dude. I knew Sean, yeah, from the way old days. Like, um, yeah, I think he, he might have been in a tech. I think he was in a class, uh, tech school class ahead of me. Okay. Um, so I knew him. I've known him since then. Yeah, another great dude. But Brett was and one cool thing about Brett. He went. He was like one of the only, like, full up operators that didn't he go to the twenty fourth and work up yep. there for a while. Yeah, mm -hmm. him and um, Kirk Newman and. Yep. Yeah, that, yep. I always had a lot of respect for those guys to do that. I mean, that that seems like one of those things that's really tough and tough nut to crack. Tough. Yeah. Tough. Uh, you know place to get into and mm -hmm. yeah, they, they went up there and thrived it wasn't even like they they barely made it they were like you know they were like the men they were like the guys yeah. up there yeah yeah, yeah. he was in it, yeah and he's such a like you he when you talk to him stuff he's just like very quiet very like you know it's not like hey. very unassuming at home yeah, yeah. Humble dude. yeah he's yeah, very yeah. humble um so it was it was great to see him and um but who, but who yeah. you mentioned before who'd you who were you talking about before when uh i cut you off um, we're talking about uh, some Sean and then Cam Rollinson, stuff like those guys. Cam's also, good dude, another good, yeah. good guy. Yeah, yeah. I talked to him like once a week. Um, so it's like just the guys are staying in a little bit longer and stuff. Like I think they stay yeah. in, you know, twenty, just over twenty. But um, yeah, it's definitely not a place for to be married. It's I think everyone I know, except for a few, <laughs> have been has gotten divorced. <laughs> one yeah. way or another. it's a tough. Life. I mean. It has. To, it takes a special kind of relationship. You have to have that. It's it. It's not for everybody, um, yeah. and it can take its toll on some people. And it's no really no hit on any person. Some people just aren't. Don't. They just can't handle it. You know. They, they're just. They. It's too much for them. Which. And I understand. Yeah. I mean, it's. You think about it like we were saying. Like when we're overseas, um, we don't think about anything except combat. But then mm -hmm. there's people on the backside that are like, they do have to take care of those bills. They do have to take care of those kids. And, you right. know, they, it's challenging, man. It's really challenging. Yeah. That's and I, so I got out and I was supposed to, um, me and Aaron, he works at the Department of Energy and oh, yeah. they have um, like their security guy, like their, I, I can't remember the name of what, what, what we were called, but we had to go interview out into uh, Albuquerque. Went out there, interviewed, got the job. Uh, there's only three places you can get um, stations, Albuquerque, um, Oak Ridge, and then Amarillo, Texas, which is no one wants to be there. <laughs> so, um, so I actually got my first choice was Albuquerque. So I was waiting. So when I got out, I was waiting for my FLETSI class, my federal law enforcement agency class to start in September. I got out in May. So I had a time period there where I didn't have a job insurance or anything like that. So I called my dad. My dad owned he just sold the company a few years ago. Um, he owned like 26 furniture and mattress stores here in Louisville and in Indiana. And I just say, Hey, can I get a job um, with you, you know, just for four months for um, to help with insurance and all that until I start my federal job that I have. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, sure. That's fine. So I came there. And, and at that time, my brother came back from LA 
and he was going to start working on the mattress side of the company because he was a he was a certain mattress rep out in um, Los Angeles okay. um, to get trained. And it just and he always going to come back and work for my dad and take over that mattress part of it. Um, so he talked me into staying, um, turning down the federal job and staying and working um, in the family business, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So I worked there for three or four years and then um, I just didn't like selling or anything like that. So mm-hmm. um, I, I just told my dad, I'm like, hey, you know, it's, I, I just want to try something different. And he was, he was fine with that and stuff. So right. he was, he was good. And uh, so I actually am a, the company I'm with now is um, Turning Point Brands. I, I know you probably heard of Zigzag, Rolling Papers. Uh, what is it? <laughs> Zigzag. Uh, Be- no. well, I know you heard of Beach Nut. Well, yeah, you probably, you know, you, everyone in the alt- alternative world, Zigzag's like, they're rolling papers for tobacco. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> So we, uh, so I, I work for a tobacco company now. I'm a region manager for them, which I've never smoked. I've never dipped. I've never done any of that. Oh, stuff. really? <laughs> and now I'm managing people that that's what we sell. We sell, so, um, but yeah, I, I had the opportunity to do that. And uh, I'm a nice. region, I've been in region manager for them since 2009. Uh, wow. It's a great company. And uh, I have Ohio, Indiana, Kentucky, Tennessee, and Illinois. And I have nine reps to work underneath me. Jeez. So it's, it's, uh, nice. I've been, I've been doing that for, for a while. And it's, I love it. It's, uh, it's really good. But the funny story back, I think it was 2009 when Q got remarried to Amy. I should know it because he calls me up and he goes, Hey Otter, I'm getting me and Amy are getting married. So I met Amy when, at, when he got promoted at Aptech. I think it was, uh-huh. like, yeah. And I went out there for that. And, uh, so I got to meet her and stuff like that. And she's uh, awesome. You know, she's, I don't know if you ever got to meet her and stuff like that, but she's I don't amazing. Think, I don't think I've ever met her. Uh-huh. No, she's, she's amazing lady and stuff and she's actually retired as a lieutenant colonel <laughs> so yeah um so he calls me up he's like hey me and amy are getting married i'm like oh great man i'll be i'll, I'll be in your wedding he's like yeah i don't want you in my wedding i'm like oh well this is an awkward, go, this is an awkward conversation <laughs> whoops I, <laughs> yeah. a little too far with that <laughs> yeah i'm like oh i just assumed this is gonna happen um he's like no i want you to officiate it i'm like uh, oh, really? <laughs> I'm like, do you know what happens if I step into a church? It's going to burn <laughs> down. Like, it's, like, like Pastor like, Otter needs to step up. Yeah. Well, not my my name on Q's whole side of the family is Father Otter. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. <laughs> His mom, Martha, calls me Father. Oh, Father Otter, you know, with that Wisconsin, Minnesota accent and her, his sister and everything. So, so I'm like, yeah, sure. I'm not sure how that's going to happen. So literally, <laughs> he's like, I got it taken care of. Don't worry about it. I go, walk down my drive. I walk down my, it's like four days later, I'm getting my mailbox and it's this big white envelope. It says Reverend William Otter on it. And I'm like, nice. <laughs> Have a certificate and everything. It's, I mean, it's a, so that's my get out of jail free card when I die. Like, hey, oh, sorry. Mr. Otter, you're not on the list to get in here. I'm like, well, I am. I'm <laughs> Reverend Otter right here. I'm in the VIP section. <laughs> so... <laughs> but yeah, so he, uh, so I'm, awesome. he's like, it's going to be really, he's like, it's really, really small. It's not going to be that big. It's going to be up in Chicago in the atrium up there. I'm like, okay, I can, I, can, I think I can do this. I get there. It's like <laughs> not 15 to 20 people. It's more like six. I don't know. It was a lot more than what he said it was. Right, it right. kind of grew. And I was like sweating, like sweating. <laughs> <laughs> I was, that was probably the most, I was more nervous for that than doing any airstrike in my life. Like that's like any check ride, anything like that. I was more, I'm like, I can't f- this up. I can't f- this up. And uh, it, I love it, went, it. <laughs> it went off. So I, they got married. My name's on their marriage certificate. And um, oh, that's awesome. they have a picture up there and their, their twins, the girls, I guess Q was um, when they taken the, when they were younger, they're taking the bed and they go to the pictures on the wall and they have a picture of me on there and stuff too with uh, i think it was q and amy and they're like who's that there? that's father otter so <laughs> his twins call me father otter and uh, uh i get, uh, to, meet, get to meet them at the uh um retirement so oh that's yeah. cool man yeah that's hilarious yeah so i have that going for me <laughs> so, if i ever need a second job or anything like that i can yeah. bury, i can baptize you bury you and marry you so it's, it's, it's <laughs> you can get a business going i can i can so oh, but that was just kind of a funny story so, um, oh yeah 
I did not know that. I didn't hear that one. That's a good one. Yeah. Well, I'm sure Q doesn't want to tell everyone, but <laughs> but yeah, oh, but yeah, I've been, I've been after I, I it was I moved back to um, Kentucky actually in Oldham County where I live now. I'm I live on 26 acres and I love 220 year old log cabin. Um, nice. And uh, yeah, I love it. I, I like you like we said. You no, know, I I won't. I, w- I don't regret anything. Um, decision of getting out of the military, and I love. And I don't regret anything while I was in the military either. I loved it. Right. I got to meet a great, you, for example, bunch of guys who taught me a lot. Um, I remember in Oman, we sat down in the tent. And I'm like, hey, what do I need to know? You know, like, yeah. this is this is totally like you guys had some training before you went to war with these guys and stuff. And right, right. My, my mine was a little bit, you know, different and stuff. I worked a lot of with the up and drum. I worked, you know, with the scouts up there and the long range reconnaissance guys up there. But it's different at the rangers and i kind of got like thrown into the uh oh, into sure. the fire yeah. and you guys yeah. were awesome and helping me out and getting me trained up and stuff like that in a combat situation so yeah i got to meet a, i mean lifelong friends and uh yeah, it was uh in a good you know i think this career field is under appreciated sometimes i think we're getting better it seems like um but there's a lot like you said there's a lot of good guys out there did a lot of awesome stuff that sure. you know you know, Shrop is one of them. Stuff so he, you know, all those guys. Yeah, I didn't so, know you guys were stationed together. That's pretty cool. I didn't. Yeah, know, I didn't realize yeah. that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, I know you mentioned before that you had you. Um, I don't want to say struggled, but you uh, you were um treat you treating your mm-hmm. PTSD. Yeah. And uh, a lot of times on on here, I like when guys do go through those things. Um, I know there's other guys out there that have not. Or that mm-hmm. may be struggling with that stuff, but haven't sought treatment or um, don't mm-hmm. know what, even what what to do about it. So if you don't mind, if, if you're comfortable with it, I wouldn't mind if you kind of maybe, you don't have to go into detail, but like tell about your experience and then how you um, got help and um, what that help was and, and how that's uh, turned out for you. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to. It's um, okay. So it was, wasn't like right after I got out of, the mil- uh, out of the military that I started feeling like something wasn't right it was a, it was like maybe like two years and i just started having dreams um and i just slowly just started creeping down that bad you know um mindset in that and that's it actually was like the very first time i ever thought about committing suicide was that like in my life like ever you know and um i was like this is not right so i went to the va that didn't help um it just they just weren't um it wasn't, it wasn't, they didn't want to help. It's just, they didn't know how to, like, they didn't, it was so kind of new, I think. Sure. Um, Cause this is like 2008, I believe. Yeah. Oh, it yeah. yeah. So it was yeah. really kind of new um, um, sure. how to deal with that. And they had no idea how to, how to, what to do to help. And I'm like, this is not helping me whatsoever. Like, I don't want to sit there and retell you my events that happened. And you, cause their thing was at back then, it was like, you tell them over and over again, eventually it will not be that bad. Um, uh-huh. But it just numb to it maybe, or you get used to it or. Yeah. And it just yeah, wasn't yeah. working. Cause every time I would, t- I was like, I would literally drive home like white knuckled and like crying. Um, so there was um, a program um, that actually Gina saw on the today show is today show a good morning America. It was uh, called save a warrior, <clears throat> not wounded warrior, but it's called save a warrior. And it had to do with PTS um with veterans and stuff and it was kind of a newer organization um it was so this is so i've been struggling from 08 all the way till 2016 and okay. on medication i was on 13 different medications um for antidepressant or depression anxiety adhd medicine uppers downers you know ambient every night um so i could just sleep so i was literally on all this medication um and I was completely numb. Like I didn't go to my boys' events. I didn't. It got to the point where I didn't want to talk. I isolated myself. I, you know, I, I hunt a lot, and I couldn't wait for hunting season because I would go out there every single night or in the morning and sit in a tree stand just so I could be by myself. Mm-hmm. And it, that wasn't um, very good for a relationship or with your kids either. Right. So one day I woke up. I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm tired of feeling like this. And I dumped all my pills down the toilet. Like I just, or threw them away and 
cut cold turkey and that's not the way you do do that right. with those <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> you don't because it chemically changes your brain when you're on them um sure sure so for the first week i was like yeah i feel oh, i'm starting to feel normal again like myself and everything and uh then i started feeling like i was going crazy like i literally felt like there's a battle going on inside my head of it's almost like the angel and the devil, like in the cartoons, like, but there was yeah. like in my head and I felt like I was going nuts and I would create a fight with Gina just to justify why I was so angry. So just so I would like, well, I'm not crazy. Cause you know, she did this and I, it was, I, would, I just create a fight with her to, to justify that. And, right. um, that was March of 2016, May of 2016. She found out about this program. Um, we, you know, I signed up, I'm like, not think I was, I'd never been to any other program before or anything. I'd never been to wounded warrior, never been to any of those other um, programs. Not saying they're not good. Uh, I just never been, I'm not like a, you see some guys be like, they're just jump from program to program or program because they're not really doing the work to get better. Um, they're just trying to stay ahead of it by still in a different program. So mm-hmm. I went to um, save a warrior june in the may beginning of june 2016 and it was five and a half days is out in actually in kentucky here they it started in malibu um it was they have it they had one in kentucky which was an hour and a half away and i drove down there and i was and it's in this beautiful lac horse park and i was at the end of the driveway and i'm like jesus christ do i really want to go to this do i really want to go and um talk about this for like, I I didn't know what it was all about, like exactly what they were doing. So I was like, no, I'm, I'm going, went there. And it was the five and a half days of, uh, it really started my journey and getting better. Um, a lot of equine therapy, um, they did meditation. Um, and you know, you, you just kind of, they got your, where your mindset and I, instead of taking medication, you do meditation instead of medication. Um, okay. So, and that really, I always thought there's like some hippie fucking granola shit that they did out in California. I'm like, oh, that, this, I'm a Kentucky boy. I'm not going <laughs> to sit there and meditate. But the way they taught it um, is only 20 minutes and it was, um, it it really helps. I mean, it, it helps and I still do it to this day and stuff. Um, not as much as I should and I can feel myself slipping if I'm not. But um, that five and a half days, um, I was in the round pen um, during equine therapy and I had this horse that I got to pick out. And I, of course I picked the biggest horse out of the whole pasture. <laughs> and I'm like, come on, Char- and his name was Charlie Brown. I'm like, come on, Charlie Brown. And he wouldn't listen to me. So I was in the round pen and this horse is running around the round pen, just bucking and just going crazy. And I'm in the middle trying to get him to stop. And the lady who was running the equine therapy said, Billy, close your eyes. And I'm like, oh, she's, I'm like, what? She's like, just listen to me, close your eyes take three deep breaths and I did. And she's like, all right, sit there. She's like, now open your eyes. And that horse was three feet from me staring at me. What? I swear to God, it was, I was like, holy shit. Um, so it could like sense that you were stressed out and it's like, yeah. I'm not going anywhere near that guy. Yeah. And th- that that's the reason they do people do equine is because wow. the horses feel your energy. And then and that's how they, um, they, sense danger like almost any wild animal the horses are very like that's why they do equine therapy and i'm like and she's like how do you run your life and i'm like huh that's in her i mean because i ran it by fear like my sure. kids feared me my you know gina at the time feared me because i was i would get mad all the time and she's like you run your life by fear and she's like if you just take your time and take te- you know those deep breaths you calmed yourself and everyone else around you were calm so that was another that was a big aha moment um for me oh, there wow. and then we had to climb climb a uh telephone pole and then you had to stand on top of this telephone pole it's like a dinner plate size and i'm like so we jumped out of airplanes like how many times and i'm up there shaking like <laughs> like a peach bit i'm like holy shit, what the fuck? like and so you climb this up and you have this stick in your hand it's duct tape around like five or six times um and you you're supposed to go up there and then you release all that stuff that you know has been keeping you down, like anything happened overseas, anything in childhood or whatever that is, all that trauma inside you. And then you jump and you hit the, um, hit that bell 
with the stick. So I jumped and I hit that bell with the stick and the stick shattered like with duct tape all the way around it. I, and when I landed on the, like they lower you to the, you're tethered up there and you lower you to the ground. Like I couldn't stop shaking for 30 minutes because all that, it was literally all that trauma that was in my body. I was like shaking like this. I couldn't even hold a water bottle. It was like almost, I had like DTs from drinking too much or whatever. Um, it, it was like all that stuff just was leaving my body when, when that happened. It was, so that was, wow. an, it, it, it's a, it was a great program. Um, I was able to go back and we call them shepherds, but like go back to, and, um, their cohorts they have. And I was able to go back and mentor and shepherd guys like 69 times, um, throughout the last seven years. So in my company, which I said is great, they saw such a difference in me after going through this program. They're like, you can go take your, you don't have to take vacation time, whatever you need to do. Just don't make it your sec. Don't make it your primary job, but go and sure. what makes you better makes us better. Sure. And I was a better manager and stuff too. And uh, my even my reps could tell a difference. And uh, so I was able for the last seven years to go back and and shepherd uh, hundreds of guys. Um, and it's changed their lives and stuff too. Oh really? So, yeah, yeah. And uh, it's you know I, I'm not doing that much with it now, um, just because I I have other stuff going on. But um, I still stay in contact, and it it, it is a great program for for that. And, uh, so it, it, that's the seven years I've been working on myself is that I've been, I read books I never thought I'd read. Um, and, uh, it, it, it's an everyday practice of something. Um, cause it's almost like working out. You, yeah. you miss a week and you're going to be start getting out of shape. And then the next thing you know, you're fat and out of shape unless you're like constantly going to the gym and taking care of yourself. This is the same way you're just doing it in your mind. Um, nice. But yeah, that's, it was, um, the PTS. I didn't, I, we dropped PTSD. Like we dropped the D cause it's not a disorder. Um, it's what I found out was like, it, you're not messed up in your mind. Like your mind's doing everything, what it's supposed to do. Right. It was your heart that was broken. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. It would, and that's what, at least for me, I'm not going to say that for everyone, but it was literally like my heart was broken for all the stuff that happened. Um, whatever, whenever that was in my life. Um, but my mind was doing the right thing. It was it, dealing with that heart dealing with or that, yeah, that is, yeah. those issues. Yeah. Yeah. So once you start healing this, um, it, 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 everything started getting better. So, um, but it's, it's an everyday, everyday thing. Cause you can slip back into it and, you know, very easily. Um, but it was but like, very but, but kind of what you're saying is, correct me if I'm wrong, but now, and this is called save a warrior. Mm hmm. Save a warrior. They they provided you with those tools. So when you do feel yourself slipping back into that bad yeah. situation, now you have the tools to deal with it. Yeah. Instead of say, taking medication or doing drugs or drinking too much or whatever, you know, instead of beating, numbing beating it your with wife or yeah. yeah, yeah, isolating. A lot of people like it's isolation. Like there's yeah. a lot of people. And then as you, I don't know if you, but for me, like if I'm sitting with myself and like, if I'm in isolation, my mind will like, I can now sit with myself and like be with, you know, whatever's going on wrong with inside me. And so with that, I'm like, all right, I know I can recognize it and then I can start working on that before it was like, I just go down dark places. And yeah. I was, you know, I had, I had a spot on a property that I hunt on that no one knew about that. I'm like, if I ever do commit suicide, that's where I'm going because no one ever know where I'm at. I had the spot picked out. I had everything, but you know, i since then I went down there and took that tree stand out and, um, and you know, it's like, that's, that's not in my cards anymore. You know, I'm not, I, I can't do that to my kids and my family or anything like that, or my friends, you know, I don't want to, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's selfish. It's a selfish act on my part. If I, if I do that. Um, and I know we've had a couple of guys in the career field that, um, have committed suicide in the past in the last few years and stuff and other, you know, like the, the Navy SEAL that, um, was it Mike day? Mike, Mike day. Yeah. Yeah. He came through save a warrior. Um, Oh, did he? Yeah. And, uh, he struggled. I mean, you shot 27 times. I mean, you're it's, uh, yeah. so, um, but yeah, it, it's, it's definitely a thing that can get you pretty, if you don't recognize it and stuff and, start the biggest thing is working on yourself and not i'm not saying medication is bad i mean i think there's some things that need medication you know i you know i still um i have to have, I have high blood pressure 
that's from the military. Um, <clears throat> but you know, the meditation part of it, like getting my mind like centered, um, is, was one of the biggest things that helped me throughout the whole thing. Um, you know, reading the books are good and stuff too, but if you don't put those books into practice, then like the, one of the best books is by Van der Kolk. It's called body keeps a score. And, um, like all the trauma in your body, everything that happened, you know, whether it's overseas or childhood or whatever, your body feels that in there in it. Um, it hurts. Like that what makes your body hurt and stuff. And uh, it's a it's a very interesting book on how people handle uh, trauma, whether it's a car wreck, whether it's, you know, anything like that. So um, there's what some really it called again? the body keeps a score. Body it's a it's score. a very it's a it's a good book. Um, and you can bounce around in the uh, chapters and stuff, too. But it's a uh, it's a good it's a good book, too. And it's very accurate on, on what goes on inside your inside your body and stuff like that. So. Yeah, and that's, I mean, the big, that's the biggest thing, how I've dealt with uh, my PTS and my, and all that. It's, uh, you know, I, that program was the one that put me on the track to, uh, to get better. And it was, I've never been to another program since. And uh, yeah. I don't, I don't need to. Helping others is also a very, I almost let that part out. Like helping others is also a big part of healing yourself too. You know, sure. I'm not saying be a, you know, come in and swoop and like, Hey, I know everything. Just, just being there for him and, and talking to him and, you know, and just helping others heal. And stuff. But that is, is a big, um, it was a big help to me, you yeah. know, like it's, it's not all about me. It's about, you know, everyone else, you know, yeah, too. Yeah. So. Well, I'm but, glad you got that help, man. I mean, I just hearing you talk that way is scary, but then I'm glad you're, you're now on the other side of it. You know what I mean? I, I, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. I think it's like it was taboo back in the day, like to talk about it. Like we never, oh, for sure, you know. And then in the military, like people, are like well, why don't you have PTSD in the military? It's you don't have time to have it. <laughs> like you, right. you're op the, especially the last, you know, the last four years that I was in, it was combat. It was like you didn't have time to process anything. Like you literally came home and you know, right back in the training after a few weeks, and you back over, yep. and until you start sitting with yourself and like realizing, like holy shit what what happened um when and i guess it's like now when you're out you have time mm -hmm. you're not training you're not you're not in combat so you have that, all that time just to think about all that stuff and you yeah. just kind of and if you don't have a way to deal with it like you figured out mm -hmm. then you can go to those dark places and, and yeah that's i'm so glad you said this man i mean that that's there's a i think there's a lot of guys out there hopefully people that listen to this if you are struggling you know there there are things to do that you can do to not go down those dark rabbit holes like you were talking about yeah. And it's, yeah. it's very easy. And, you know, you, you get your mind and, you know, your mind's a very powerful thing and um, it can talk into doing some stupid stuff. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm, I, it's, I'm very fortunate that I found that program and uh, was able to be a part of it for the last seven years. And uh, it's, yeah, it, it, it's one of the best ones out there, I would say. So, well, man, that's awesome. This has been phenomenal. I, I can't thank you enough for, for coming on here and, um, just hearing those stories and then hear, hearing about how you were able to, um, you know, overcome that is, just, is powerful, man. I mean, and, and I'm personally, me as your buddy, yeah. I'm happy, you know, yeah. I'm happy that it happened. I, mean, I, I don't know what I'd have done if I'd heard that you, I, anyway, I, I'm glad yeah. that you got, you got that help. It's pretty powerful. It is. Um, I think a lot of people, you know, struggle with it and, you know, they don't feel like they can talk about it. And, you know, I think that's the biggest thing is to start talking about it sure. and, and getting that out there and stuff. So. So can they go to is Save a Warrior? Is it like SaveWarrior.com or is do they are they open? No, I think SaveWarrior.org. Okay. Yeah, you can kind of so read Save it. Warrior. All right, I'll I'll try to look it up and maybe post it on the in the show notes or something. And, okay. Yeah, that'd be you know, good. I mean, we're, we're you know they, it's it's a good uh, good organization. So. Well, all right, man. Hey, yeah. it was been so <laughs> so awesome catching up with you, dude. I know. Man. I was like, man, I when I started setting this up i was like it's been so long i was like man when the hell was the last time i talked to that dude anyway <laughs> no, it's like where is that my going away it was that um yeah was it at trent's joy's house or I, it was at somebody's house oh okay that were and brandenburg was deployed um q was there you i mean it was a bunch of people foster was there foster got me the thing so i got to, actually i got to uh, have dinner with foster up in dayton a few uh few weeks ago oh no kidding 
fucking love that guy, man. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's so great. awesome, dude. Like from where he when he first came to us to where he where he went, it was yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> was, oh my god, yeah, yeah. He, but, I mean, he was like a war hero. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would say that we maybe maybe we had something to do with that. I don't know. No, <laughs> so, eh, maybe but, a little bit. Maybe a little bit. No, he, it was great catching up with him, and I, I haven't seen him since that night either. And I didn't realize he was—he's just in Dayton, Ohio. So, um, yeah. Oh yeah, that's like right, right down the road from me. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, and I was, and that's where Laura's from, the, the girl I'm seeing, and stuff like that. So I was up seeing. I was like, well, "Where are you at, Foster?" Because I was on that. I'm on on that the 17th um, signal. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I see you on there quite a couple times. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't, don't know the <laughs> protocol yet for it, but I know, right? I'm, I'm like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I'm doing. Like, we're, like, we're like, out, no, man. We want to worry about that. Yeah, I know. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I saw his name. Like, you know, so I. I text him on the side and I'm like, Hey, where are you living at? He's like in Dayton. I'm like, no shit, dude. I'm like up there all the time. So we need to hook. So we um, hook up for dinner and stuff like that. And that was, it was, yeah, it was great to, great to catch up with him. And like I said, I'm yeah. up with Brandy and Nick and, and Q next week and stuff like that. And Palm Springs out there. So oh, man, it's going to be cool. Yeah, it'd be good. Um, it's always good seeing those guys. So we <laughs> always tell otter stories for some reason. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's enough of those guys around. But <laughs> <laughs> that was great talking to you, man. Good catching yeah, up you too. You. Yeah. Yeah, you taught me a lot, so I appreciate it. Well, man, it was great catching up with you, man. Don't be a stranger. Yeah, you too, man. Um, thanks a lot for doing this. I appreciate it. No, I appreciate you having me on, man. I, I feel honored that you uh, you you had me on. That's oh, uh, for sure, for that, sure. That's it was awesome. awesome. Yeah, I think it's great. Like I said, I can't. I'm gonna go back and watch more of your of the of the podcast and some of the other guys and stuff. And uh, so I, I think it's all. Yeah, like I said, I think it's awesome bringing awareness and stuff too. So it's uh, yeah, man. To go back and look at them all. Like cues, like when uh, Nick sent it over to our group text, I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I'm sitting there like watching in the gym. I'm like, I got to work out, but I'm like, I couldn't stop watching I me mean, because it, oh, it was so well done and stuff too. So, Oh, it, and just his, that whole thing was just, um, I was on the edge of my seat the whole time. Just like, and, and like talking about just the, just the details about how, when he was like on that plane and they were shoving his back with gauze and then the kid I don't know how he remembers fell back and ripped it out of his back and like, yeah. you know, just, Oh, it's crazy. I remember, like watching Gwen like pack it. And it was like, like oh, that God. whole thing is going in there. <laughs> like, in his back. Yeah. yeah. And then, then when she pulled the old one, I'm like, it's just oh. like, it was, I, I mean, he's freaking lucky. Um, so oh, yeah, that whole, that whole thing was, uh, yeah. And I remember. Oh, I mean, can you imagine? I mean, uh, nah, just, just getting blown up by whatever. I mean, I mean, he wasn't, he, those guys weren't even in the vehicle. They were like outside. I mean, it's amazing. They, any of them lived. I mean, yeah. it's just crazy. It no. is. It's nuts. It's nuts. And, uh, um, yeah, it's it, very, they're lucky. Um, yeah. But it's, 100. I, I just, for him, you know, he's very nonchalant about it too. Like for he, sure. He, yeah. He was a very humble guy. Like he, no big deal. <laughs> he's like, you know, I, I was, you know, <laughs> it's like, dude, you're like, it was fucking awesome. Man. <laughs> like, Heroic. Yeah. Heroic for sure. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, like I said, you know, you got everyone else out there and stuff doing awesome stuff and it's great that you're bringing, um, you know, bringing it forward and stuff and stuff. <laughs> but, All right, man. All right, man. I can't thank you enough for doing that. I really appreciate it, man. Well, I, I appreciate it. Give me the opportunity too. So. Oh, for sure. All right, Billy. All right, buddy. Talk to you All later. Right, I'll talk to you later.